Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, along with Tony Hager. This is Global Wrestling News. Eight athletes have earned the right to represent Team USA at the Freestyle World Championships. Let's take a look at 57 kilos. Your boy Thomas Gilman took out three NCAA champs and a three-time world team member in Tony Ramos. After a close 4-3 decision in bout one, Gilman picked up the pace, hitting a second period takedown and a pair of push-outs to clinch the series 7-2. Tony, did you think Gilman could make it to the finals? let alone beat Ramos? Yeah, I mean, after when I saw the brackets, I was just thinking in my mind, man, this is this is going to be a more brutal road than I thought it was already going to be. I mean, he barely got through the last chance qualifier. So not only did he get there, but to get to Ramos, you know, I thought when he got to Ramos, he'd have a better chance to, to winning that match than actually winning the bracket, if that makes sense. Because Tom and Terry, they know Tony Ramos better than anybody. Gilman has wrestled with him in the room, you know, growing up, basically making him a better wrestler. So he knows where his strengths and his weaknesses are. And they and they had a great game plan. They slowed him down with those underhooks and got the job done. Is Gilman Terry and Tom's long forgotten brother? I think he's Terry's long forgotten brother. I'm pretty sure that these guys have a, a locker right next to each other. So <laughs> these guys think alike, act like, wrestle alike. Amazing. And they talk alike. Logan Stever doesn't talk like brands, but let's talk about Logan Stever. He met up with U.S. Open champ Kendrick Maple, the reigning world champ, at a very close match, but swept the series by tech fall in the second. First off, Tony, impressive to see Maple there in the finals. Question, though, how good is Logan Stever at this weight class? You know, for, you know first to get to your, your comments on Maple, you know, I think uh, he, he came off the whistle right away. Like First off, just shooting off Logan Seaver, wasn't scared of him being a world champ, scored multiple times. Logan kept on the attack, but Maple has just such heavy hands, and he's quick feet, he's got real long arms, so he was able to score a lot of points on Seaver, but he faded in, in the match. He faded in every single match, and Logan just kept on going and attacking, and, and really, he, that's the reason why he is the world champ. That's why he's going to be a, a force at this weight class, because he has such a motor. Even if he's down 6-0, he has the opportunity to come back. Zane Rutherford faced his former coach and training partner in the championship series at 65. Both traded wins, with Rutherford making his first world team over the Olympian. Now, Tony, did you actually pick Rutherford? Yeah, I think last week I picked it, and I picked it on a podcast with Ross. You know, I, I thought Rutherford would uh, get the job done. I mean, Jordan Oliver being in there, I, I picked him before. We knew that Oliver, you know, tested positive for uh, for drugs, so um, he he was out of it. Rutherford went oh, through the tournament. Let's be careful, not drugs, a banned substance. Banned substance, yeah. sorry, banned substance. So whatever that that could be, but uh, um, you know, Molinaro. You know, he, he knows Rutherford very well, but what Rutherford, what's good about him is he just keeps going on the attack. He's just like Logan Steber as well. You see that the the guys that are on the attack are the ones that are getting the job done, and he just keeps going and keeps going, and he wears down his opponents, and that's exactly what he did. All right, let's move to the news on James Green. Former Nebraska All-American Green sent the big red faithful home happy, scoring a two-match sweep over Jimmy Kennedy. What are your thoughts on Green's chances to earn a world medal? Yeah, I think he can do it again. You know, there's some times where we don't know where James Green's at. You know, he's kind of he's gone up a little weight and you know didn't have success. And I think this is a good weight class for right. him. Um, and I don't know if you've noticed, but on social media, he's been a little more chippy about some things. So for for me, I feel like now he's he's kind of getting out of Jordan Burroughs shadow everyone just always puts these two together obviously in nebraska they're training partners but now i feel you know he, he was with asics now he's with nike he's got to deal with them on social media he's he's just it's confidence to me somebody that's real chippy on there it's it's just it's good, and I, I think James Green is going to do well. All right, stay tuned. Our World Team Trials recap continues after the break. You're watching Global Wrestling News. Thanks to our friends at Casey's General Stores, famous for pizza. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to Yellow Blue LED lighting, and you should too.
All right, welcome back. As expected, Jordan Burroughs met up with his longtime rival in the championship series at 74. Dake won his first bout, making him the first wrestler to beat Burroughs on American soil. JB, however, took the next two, making his seventh U.S. world team. Tony, what are your thoughts on this series? I mean, these matches were were trending really Dake's way, right? I mean, they were just, it seemed like this was finally Dake's time, but, you know, when he threw when he threw Burroughs for four, I was like, I mean, holy cow! This is uh, in in Lincoln, Nebraska. This is nuts. But you know what, Jordan? What makes Jordan Burroughs so good again is he he just finds a way to get it done. He, he wins the close matches. He he you know he readjusted after that first one and just kind of he had the same game plan, but he just I think he executed a little bit more and he held the center a little bit better. So. Um, the, the three match series is like a must watch. So you can go on USA Wrestling's YouTube page, YouTube page, and find you know one, two, three matches. The the best one actually is the last match. Tony, how can we? I mean, I really want Dake and Burroughs on the same team. How do we get it done? Well, they're they're we need more weight classes for one. Okay. And I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, we, we've tried. They've tried to make it work. I think you know with, with Taylor going up now, Dake's going down. So I just it's gonna be hard. I think the only option really is either Burroughs has got to retire so Dake can come in, or Dake's got to go over to Greco, which he he's capable of doing. All right. Speaking of David Taylor, Jaden Cox got a wake up call from the Magic Man, and it looked like Taylor would finally make a world team. But in the end, Cox prevailed. Yeah, lots of take, lots of take away from this series. And the biggest one was, you know, David Taylor really just um, shocking Cox. I guess I don't know if Cox just wasn't ready. You know, he we haven't been able to see him break through. And what what do we what's he do now, right? What what does Taylor do? Does he continue on this grind where he just hasn't been able to break through? Does he go into coaching? Um, you know, Taylor injured Cox in that in like the third match, and but Cox was able to prevail with that. But you know. If Cox is hurt, Taylor would be the guy. So, you know, I, I picked Taylor because of his offense. Cox defense was too much. There was a little, you know, a lot of people think that he was fleeing the mat, that, you know, there was sweat all over the mat, so he was sliding all over it the place. It was wet. Yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of a crazy matchup, and it's uh, one that, you know, very controversial and people are going to complain about forever. But I think in the end, you know, Cox, you know, got it done with, you know, even on injury, he got, he prevailed. All right, and let's talk just for a minute about what did happen after the match. There was a, a, a little bit of a back and forth between the official. First a block gets thrown at the official, then a towel, and then the chair. And who's doing the throwing, Tony? Kale Sanderson. Yeah. And, and the wrestling world is on fire about this. Well, I mean, cause they're, all they talk about is having fun, right? And they were not having fun because they were they lost. They were they were losing. Uh, you know, we didn't see. You know, when when Rob Cole, Kyle Dake, they they kind of things didn't go their way. They were upset about it as well. Kale Sanderson didn't. People kind of it was quiet, but. Kale Sanderson got kicked off. He got kicked out. He kicked got red, off. got kicked off, got red carded. So this is a, this is a big deal. And David Taylor was not happy with uh, Zadik as well. I'd be really kind of curious to see what words were said, and you know if anything uh, has been said behind closed doors. Closed doors, indeed. We'll see if we can't crack them open just a little bit and continue to tell you more as this story continues. 2016 Olympic gold medalist Kyle Snyder got some revenge over college rival Kyvin Gadsden. Uh, you might remember the Gadsden throw that put Snyder on is back in the NCAA championships. Well, there was no throw from Gadsden this time, and Snyder, well, he swept the series with two techs. What you expected? Yeah, this is the Olympic champ. He's the Olympic champ for a reason. As much as I'm a huge fan of Kyvin Gadsden, he's just not ready for this type of wrestler. You know, he's just not that caliber. Even you know, Kyvin knows that, too. He's got a blog up on his website, gadsdenstrong.com. Read that. that. That really shines a light on, you know, he knows that, he lost, and there's lots, long ways to go for him to be on that level of Kyle Snyder. Yeah, and if you want to read that blog, you will find the heart of Kyvin Gadsden amazingly open. All right, Nick Gwizdowski was the media favorite for everyone on Takedown Radio and the Roundtable. He showed up 
and swept Don Bradley. Yeah, I had him as a huge favorite here to take this weight class. And this is this is refreshing to see at this weight class. Zach Ray, I mean, Treville Delegnev, he dominated this weight class forever, but he was on you know so many injuries with his back, just he couldn't uh, he couldn't get the job done. So Quiz is one of those those heavyweights that has extreme. Uh, Matt sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's able to take the shots when he needs to take the shots. He's able to have a powerful underhook. He's just uh, a guy that I think can su- surprise some people if he get, you know starts working with Delagnev again to really kind of work on the international wrestling, how they wrestle. I think Turbell could be a, a good asset for him. All right, want you to stay tuned. Brandon Slay and BJ Futrell are up next. You're watching GWN. Thanks to Pure and Clean Sports. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one. What's up guys, I wanna tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around. And the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind of um, any kind of wounds that are going to turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with a amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure. Stay clean. Checking them out. PureandCleanSports.com. In Lincoln, the Pennsylvania Regional Training Center compiled a solid 8-4 record at the World Team Trials. Two-time All-American B.J. Futrell reached the Challenge Tournament Finals with victories over Dean Heil and Evan Henderson before falling to eventual champ Zane Rutherford. We caught up with the PRTC head coach Brandon Slay and his first World Team athlete, B.J. Futrell. Let's talk about the athletes because it was in Lincoln, Nebraska where we saw the first light. Uh, for you guys, and that light is a national team member, and that was B.J. Futrell who took second in the trials, third overall in the weight. But nonetheless, this is your first national team member, one that you will always remember. Correct. This was this is the third year uh, of existence for the Pennsylvania RTC, and for us to have our very first national team member, I think, is, is a special thing. And, you know, B.J. wrestled. Um, I think he wrestled well, especially after coming out off of, he was off the mat for two and a half months and over 10 weeks because he got a concussion in Cuba at the very end of February. And so we lost him there for a while. We had to be really wise with his recovery, but, um, you know, that last chunk of time about a little over the last month, he was able to train consistently. I was able to push him to a high level and, and I was really pleased that he, um, that he competed the way that he did in Lincoln. His health, he's always had a, a nagging issue of one one thing or another, but dude looked rock solid. And, and that's the thing. I think a lot of certain people would say, hey, you got to be careful recruiting BJ out to the, the you know, PRTC because he's had a lot of injuries. And, and that's the thing. That's just, that's part of sports. And, you know, that was a risk that we took. And I believe that it's clearly was worth the risk. Um, I think after when he got hurt, and Cuba was almost like, man, this happened again. But 
uh, we continued to believe in him, continue to support him, continue to make sure he rehabbed appropriately. And, and I saw a big smile on his face after making his first national team. Pennsylvania Regional Training Center obviously treating you well. You're getting some uh, great education out there, people imparting their knowledge on you. Uh, it seems like uh, you know what we saw out of the PRTC, we saw three PRTC wrestlers leave the trials ranked top five in the nation in their weight class. You made the dang team. First of all, congratulations. What's that feel like? Thank you. It's a, it's a tremendous honor and something I, that I don't take lightly because it's, it's definitely been a difficult road to uh, – to get to this point and uh i'm excited and, I, and i'm looking forward to con continuing to improve and and moving forward in my career and uh and more success in the future we thought it was uh just wide open twist of the throttle man as you open the tournament at 65 two tight victories victories nonetheless four three over uh dean heil and then a six five victory over evan henderson what was going through your head at that point um it was just uh you got you got to have some grit. You got to have some grind to win those close ones. I had I had to show a lot of heart and uh, and find a way to pull it out because uh, I wasn't if I'm if I'm being honest with myself I wasn't as sharp as I wanted to be at the tournament and and it was difficult to um, to be to be as sharp as I could have been um, considering the fact that I was out for ten weeks leading up to the open. So um, going into it, um, I was I knew I was going to do all I could and I was just. Not going to so much worry about the results, but just worry about my effort and my attitude because those are the two things that I can always control. And uh, I was just going to give my best and then let God take care of the rest. Who would you like to thank? Obviously, we don't take these trips alone. Uh, I got so many people that I could thank that just encouraged me. And uh, I really want to thank Coach Slay. Um, I just want to take the time to just thank him because he, 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 uh, he saw potential in me um, from, from, our, from our early time. And I feel like... Uh, when my, when my, some of my potential was still hidden. I feel like a lot of people can, can believe in you when your success is evident, but uh, he really took the time to believe in me, invest in me when my potential is still hidden. So I feel like if you have those people in your life, uh, you, should, you should hold on tightly to, to those people. And he, even, even the time that I was, that I was out with injury, um, never once did he uh, stop communicating you know, um, his belief in me and, that, and really his love for me. Um, not only just as a wrestler, but as a as a person, and uh, he's somebody that I, that I trust to be the caretaker of my dreams. That's why I uh, decided to to move to Philly, and uh, I just appreciate the man that he is, and and how he's helped me grow not only as a wrestler, but as a as a man of faith, and uh, and and as a future husband and as a future father. So he's somebody that I look up to a lot. Pammy, Futrell, Perry, all finish in the top five. This is why regional training centers are so very important, Tony. We're taking guys uh, who really didn't have elite training opportunities in the past. They do now. They, this gives them a real chance to succeed on the senior level, which raises all boats. The tide raises all boats. Well, I think the, the biggest change is you know them giving them really a, this a full time job. A lot of guys were training in the in the college room still, but they had a job, a part time job on the outside. So now they can really focus. This this money is is huge. It, to be able to go in, work out, you know, in the morning, at lunch, and at night. This is this is a game changer for a lot of people that really people maybe kind of dust away to the side because they weren't elite level. Now they're kind of raising that bar. They got some ways to go, but some of these guys like Futrell, uh, they they really are starting to, to rise. All right, I agree. Quick Hits is up next. Stay tuned. You're watching GWN. Thanks to our friends at McBride Matt. Stay tuned. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received.
Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so defend what you have built. All right, let's head to Colorado Springs, Colorado. The news there has Olympic and two-time world champ Kevin Jackson being hired as the head freestyle developmental coach. Jackson will work with USA Wrestling's age group athletes and will help launch the new Elite Accelerated program at the OTC. This will be Jackson's second stint on the national team staff after spending the past eight years at Iowa State. Personal bias aside, I think this is a huge hire. Well, KJ has always had success at that freestyle level coaching personally. So I think just, you know, he's got he's got Iowa State really kind of on the back of his mind, or people have that on the back of their mind, was not successful there. So, you know, wash that away. It was not a, not a good college coach. I think he, you know, he acknowledged that and has moved on now. And USA Wrestling realizes that freestyle is where it needs to be, and they, they hired him for a reason. I think the success he's had overall in coaching on the senior and youth level speaks for itself. KJ's a freestyle guy. I think that's why he was able to recruit so well at Iowa State. Well, I mean, he picked up three Fargo national champs. Heck, it might have been four. Put like two to three weeks after Fargo got done. So you, you know he's got a freestyle mind when he's watching these guys right. wrestle and what they're capable of doing. Sometimes that freestyle doesn't cross over to success at the college level, but he was kind of just getting that those recruits Lost in running. Translation. So uh, you know the getting them focused on the mat is was maybe a, a problem, but uh, I think freestyle mind he's going to be great. All right, as we told you last week, the Northern Iowa wrestling program has found a new home within the Big Twelve. They're not the only ones. The conference also announced the addition of Fresno State. This past season, you and I finished a perfect eight known conference play, capturing the regular season title against powerful schools like Missouri. Meanwhile, Fresno State will return after a 10 year absence from the sport and begin this fall. I think this is big and big for the Big 12. I miss it, makes them like whole again, right? They were just kind of picking pieces off of you know affiliates and I think well they still are but I think uh, this is great for money wise for the programs too there hopefully there could be some TV deals in the future for some of these small schools I think it's a great move for Fresno as well Pac-12 they've got to compete with you know other schools and you know, Arizona State they're really you know getting things rolling out there too so I think uh, I think it's a smart move for them not to do the Pac-12 I guess I don't even know if that was an option but Big 12, definitely. Uh, travel might be an issue for some people, so for some recruits, but in the end, it's it's great for the Big 12. How big a blow is this for the MAC? And I'm curious if Missouri would have renewed their contract if they knew Northern Iowa was leaving. SIUE is not a big splash, for, for me anyways. I, I mean, maybe for people at the MAC, but what I think happened, and I don't know really how this happened, but I think Northern Iowa said they wanted to get out of the MAC and SIU. UE really kind of wanted in, so right. it was really kind of a gut reaction to, hey, let's bring him in because we're losing Northern Iowa. For Missouri, I think they knew this was happening as well, so they renewed their contract um, because this this has been going on for the last 30, 60 days. So they wouldn't have renewed if they, they knew that didn't know that Northern Iowa was coming in. Now, I'm surprised the Pac-12 didn't make a run at Fresno State, especially with the loss of Boise. I think it really boiled down to the Pac-12 just not wanting Fresno State, and this is the only place that they really could go where they can make a splash in recruiting where their kids would want to you know wrestle in front of them. So Arizona State has the momentum. So again, like I said, I, I don't think uh, Pac-12 12 would have been a good spot for them anyways. All right, in a post-finals interview at the World Team Trials, young Tony Ramos said he needed some time to figure out what's next. I can't say if I'm going to keep competing, he said. I can't say if I'm going to be done. What's your take, Tony? Have we seen the last of T-Ram? Well, I, I think uh, it will, for, for Ramos, I think it will all come down to what the future weights are going to be for him. That cut down to 57 kilos can't be easy for him. Now, he's got... He's got two kids now. He's got a wife, new job in North Carolina, which I know that he's he's pumped about coaching now. Yeah. So, you know, transitioning. I think he maybe just needs to take a little time off just to focus on coaching. He can always come back. And we got three more years to for the Olympics. Uh, 
So, uh, but I think the weight class is ultimately going to be the decision maker. I know he was very disappointed, but I've never seen him quite this relaxed after a loss. He just seems really happy with where his life is right now. Wrestling, apparently, is not everything. Well, there's, I mean, there's no excuses this year, right? He had, had excuses in Iowa City with the, you know, him and Brands not getting along or for maybe miscommunication. So he, he said that Tom and Terry were prepared. So he got out coached, and there's really nothing he could say. He's, there's nothing that he could back up to, to make an excuse for this. And I think, uh, I think, I mean, at the end of the day, people are, you know, is Tony Ramos going to retire? He's been like number one or number two in the country for how many years now? So if he was like got like third or fifth, he you know got didn't even come close to U.S. Open title. I could say, well, maybe let's just let's step away for good. But he's like number one, number two in the country. So let's let's not throw the towel in yet. All right, Tony. You know who wrestling fans have seen the last of? Us. So we're out of time. For Tony Hager and all of us here in Des Moines, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Global Wrestling News. We'll see you next week.